Yes, we managed to solve the problem. By applying integration by parts, we distributed the double spatial derivative that was on the electric field, EZ, with the interpolation functions, uh, which you can see here on the left side of these equations, so that now instead we have one spatial derivative on EZ, and we also have the second spatial, a, spa a second spatial derivative on the weighting function right here. So now we can still use the linear interpolation functions that we've chosen without causing one of the terms in the weak form of the wave equation to evaluate to zero, which is what we had here on the left-hand side. Here are the two node equations that we started with, and these include the ex expansions of EZ. And here are the new versions of the node equations after plugging in the two terms that we developed by applying the integration by parts. So for this, we applied the integration by parts and here as well. So now we have the integration by parts in these two terms. And for the second equation, the integration by parts, we've now converted it to these two terms. The last ones here are the same. I just distributed the W2 and the W1, which you can see here. Notice that the first terms, the first terms here in both of these equations are evaluated only at the end points. So these are only evaluated at the nodes. So we can call these end point terms. Whereas these other ones are integrals across the entire element. So integrals over entire element. We're going to be treating the integral terms here and the endpoint terms, the very first one, differently. So let's keep all the integral terms on the left side of the equation and let's move the endpoint terms over to the right side. So here, all I did was I moved those first endpoint terms that were over here, I moved them over to the right-hand side. And then to get rid of this minus sign that we have in the front, let's go ahead and multiply the entire equation by negative one. So now this is going to go away, this is going to go away, we'll have minus signs here, and this will also go away. Lastly, we need to figure out what to use for the weighting functions, w1 and w2, everywhere where they show up in these equations. A common accro approach, which is called the Galerkin approach, is to use the same functions for the weighting functions as for the interpolation functions. So in other words, for simplicity, we can start with n1, which we've already defined to be a linear function. We can just set w1 to be equal to n1, and n2, we can say w2 is equal to n2. So everywhere in these equations, we can just plug in for w, we can convert this to n2, and this, we can just say this is n1, same thing here, this is n1, this is n2, this is n1, and this is n2 using the Galerkin approach. Here are now the element equations with the weighting functions equal to the interpolation functions with the integration by parts applied to that first term where we had two derivatives with respect to x and also with the expansion of ez incorporated into the equation for ez. Now I've only used the expansion of ez on the left side of this e these equations on the left side only. So on the right side, so here and here for both of these equations, I'm leaving EZ as just EZ. I'm not plugging in the expansion. And this is because we aren't going to do much with the endpoint terms here. These last two terms are endpoint terms. We're not going to be doing much with these right now. We're going to be dealing with them later when we start assembling the entire grid together and we start applying the boundary conditions and so forth. 
So for now, let's just see if we can simplify the right side of these equations though, these endpoint terms. Is there a way that we can simplify these equations? Consider the linear interpolation functions that we've chosen for n1 and n2. Do you see how we can simplify the right-hand sides of these equations, these endpoint terms?